you've got questions, well, we have the man to answer those questions, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Good to see you again, Bob. Good to see you. My inbox is full. Here's a question from a reader, listener, viewer. It goes like this. Can you confirm if reinvested Roth conversions will affect IRMA? I'm in Texas, and the Social Security office told me they wouldn't, but I can't find this information in writing. I retired this year at age 68, and I'm currently on Medicare. I haven't taken Social Security benefits yet. I'm planning to do so at age 70, given the potential 24% Social Security reduction starting in 2034, I would receive about 4,300 monthly at 70. As a high earner, I couldn't contribute to a Roth IRA directly. What are your thoughts on this situation? Yeah, it's a really good question. So the, uh, well, first off, when we talk about IRMA, let's, let's make sure that people understand what we're talking about. So IRMA is an income related monthly adjustment amount. It is an amount that high earners pay uh, as an additional premium for Medicare Part B and or Part D. Uh, if you're on Medicare Advantage, you can also be subject to this. That's Medicare Part C. Uh, Medicare Part A, usually free for most people. Don't have to worry about it. But again, higher earners typically paying a higher premium for Medicare's Part B and Part D. Now, having said that, the, the, the question talked about reinvested Roth conversions, which to be honest is a, a little Little bit of a confusing, a uh, little bit confusing terminology because it's not there's not really such a thing as reinvested Roth conversions. Either you make a Roth conversion and the money's invested, or you're. So let's just talk about how this works, right? If you make a Roth conversion, you're pulling forward income to today. So question said, I've never been able to contribute to a Roth. So it sounds like this person is saying, I don't have any Roth IRAs. I couldn't contribute because my income was too high while I was working. But there's no income limit on converting. And maybe now that I'm retired, my income is lower. So I'd like to do this. How will that affect my IRMA? The answer there ultimately is that your conversion income, right? What you convert today will have an impact or at least can potentially have an impact on your IRMA. Meaning if you do a $100,000 Roth conversion today, you're increasing your income this year by $100,000. If that pushes you over your IRMA threshold and into a higher one, then your premiums will go up. Now, by contrast, when we take money out of the Roth IRA, right, if you're letting that money grow and it goes from 100,000 to 500,000 down the road, that $500,000 comes out tax and penalty free as long as you follow certain rules. And that does not increase IRMA. In other words, unlike, let's say, municipal bond interest, where you have to add that back in, even though it's supposedly tax exempt. It's not really, right? Because of that reason. Roth IRA distributions truly are, if they're qualified distributions, tax and penalty free. They don't have to get added back to IRMA. Now, one more wrinkle, because there's always one more wrinkle. I said that if you make a conversion today, it will potentially impact your IRMA. That was a little bit of a shortcut because it doesn't actually impact your IRMA now it maybe impacts your IRMA two years from now, the way Medicare and the Social Security Administration look at that uh, monthly adjustment amount, that increase in premium, is they look at your income typically from two years prior. So if in 2028, let's say, someone is enrolled in Medicare, we're going to look back in 2026's income. They did a conversion in 2026 that could increase their 2028 Medicare Part B or Part D premiums. Right. So a, a quick follow-up. If someone, let's assume for sake of argument, we're in 2024, someone did a Roth conversion in 2022, mm -hmm. they are now subject to IRMA. Uh, but in the following year, there is no Roth conversion. Their income goes back down. The penalty is only for that one year. That they're, That's exactly that they're... right. So this is one of those situations where, you know, it, it's, it's a one and done as long as your conversion is one and done. The other thing you can do is you can be very strategic about your conversions. And a lot of times people say, well, I only want to convert up to this bracket, this tax bracket. And they don't think about anything else. They don't think about credits that might get phased out at different levels or deductions that might get phased out at different levels or surtaxes that might get triggered at certain levels or Medicare Part B or Part D premiums that might happen at different levels. So the idea like, oh, I'll just convert up to the maximum of the 22% or 24% bracket, that's 
overly simplistic for a lot of individuals and actually could lead to some inefficient decisions over the long run. You want to make sure that you're looking at things like Medicare Part B and Part D premiums as part of the total cost that you pay. Now, the nice thing is if you convert prior to 63, you pretty much never have to worry about this because most people don't enroll in Medicare until 65. So if you convert before 63, you don't have to worry about Medicare Part B and Part D premiums because those conversions won't impact your premiums. You don't have them at that time. Yeah. So in our reader's case, they were uh, he was 68 and planning not to take Social Security until age 70. That could be in his favor in terms of having a perhaps lower taxable income. It, it could be. Now at 68, if you do a conversion two years in the future, you're 70. So it's possible that a conversion today might impact it. But he also might look and say, hey, if I do this conversion now, it'll help me keep my future income lower because I won't have as high of RMDs. And maybe I'll just pay a higher Medicare Part B or D premium this one time, as opposed to every year once I have to start taking required minimum distribution. So it's a give and take, right? Uh, ultimately, when it comes to retirement accounts, it's not a matter of if you're going to pay tax, it's a matter of when you're going to pay tax. So ultimately, choose the right time to do so when your total cost is as low as possible. Yeah. So it strikes me that this is not something you should do at home alone. You'd probably need the help of a trustworthy, competent uh, tax advisor to at least help you with the what if scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would agree with that. Um, and I'd say, you know, your tax advisor doesn't have to be your CPA. It certainly can be in some situations, but some CPAs just prepare returns. Uh, they're not in tax planners, they're tax preparers. Other CPAs do both. Some financial advisors, they're only looking at investments. Others will look at investments and do tax planning. Whatever situation that someone's in, though, I can tell you, I spend a lot of time looking through the tax code and, you know, I can't do this by sight. In other words, I'm not looking at someone's situation saying, here's the map up. You need software to help with this. There's too many permutations and calculations for any one human being to be able to run them all in their mind, unless they're like some one of those like superhuman computer people who can uh, who could do that sort of stuff. But uh, unless you're that one person in the world, you're going to need some type of software to help with this. And again, a professional might have access to that as well. Yeah. Well, in the world of give and take, as you mentioned a second ago, you gave a good answer and I'm taking it. All right. Well, we'll take more questions from you if you'll give them to us. And you can do that by emailing us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions real soon.